Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a close look at this book. This book is called Discrete Mathematical Structures and it's by Coleman, Busby, and Ross. And this is the third edition. So I actually have the fourth edition as well. And so I just wanted to make this video just to talk about this book and what I think about it. So first let me say that I think this is a good book for beginners because it's well written and it has solutions to the odd numbered exercises also, it includes proofs to most of the odd-numbered exercises, at least the ones I've looked at. Many books don't do that, and so I think that makes this quite nice. Let's just go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. So this is the third edition. It's by Coleman, Busby, and Ross. And here's the inside cover. So this one is from 1996, but this is the third edition. So there's also a first and second edition, and they're much older. Yeah, 84 and 87. Oh, let me show you something really cool. So this book has another feature that I think is cool. So a lot of books, they'll have like, you know, tables or something, usually on the back or the front flap of the book. But this one actually organizes it by section too. So you see here you have all of the symbols for chapter one. So if you are learning this stuff for the first time and you don't know any, ma any math at all, and you don't know what the symbols mean, you can reference this. Sure, you know, this is defined in the chapter, but it just makes it easy. Maybe you can't find it in the chapter and you're like, I don't know what this weird circle plus symbol means. Oh, it's the symmetric difference of sets. And then look, it tells you where it's defined. It's on page nine. Let's just go ahead and check. Let's just see if it's correct. So page nine, yep, there it is. If A and B are two sets, we define their symmetric difference as the set of all elements that belong to A or B, but not to both. And we denote it by A circle plus B. Really cool. Yeah, so I think that's one of the really cool things about this book uh, that makes it really good for beginners. Let's take a look at the table of contents. So it starts off with sets and subsets, which is very typical, I think, of these types of books. Most discrete math books start with this. One thing that makes this one a little bit different is that they do include matrices in chapter one. So I have perused most of this information uh, already. Two is on logic, so it's on basic logic stuff. I've looked mainly at uh, methods of proof and mathematical induction. I haven't really gone through uh, 2.1 and 2.2 in this particular book. Counting it includes all of the basic counting things like permutations, combinations, the all-important pigeonhole principle. So if you ever take discrete math, you're definitely going to do these things. So this is a good book because of that. So I should mention, if you are taking discrete math or you're going to be taking it, this is a great book to get because all of the topics in this book will typically appear in a discrete math course. Also, um, the way this book is written is a little bit easier than a lot of the other discrete math books out there. Four is on relations and digraphs. Five is on functions. Six is on topics and graph theory. Seventh is on order relations and structures. And I've looked at some of these chapters, but not all of them. For example, I have not looked at chapter eight, which is on trees. I have read pretty much all of nine. It's on semi-groups and groups. And I think they did a really good job here. It's really, really written in a very introductory way. 10 is on languages and finite state machines. I have not looked at that. And 11 is on groups and coding. And then here you have some algorithms and pseudocode. Experiments in discrete math. I have not looked at that. And answers to odd numbered exercises. This is so useful. And then there's an index, which is also pretty good on page 513. Let me show you the answers really quick. So you see here how, let me just find like the induction ones so I can show you. They have like solutions. I mean, the, the, the author decided, the author is rather, decided to include solutions, which is really, really quite cool. I think it's over here. Well, here's a proof right here. For example, suppose that M and N are even, then there exist integers J and K such that M is equal to 2J and N is equal to 2K. And if you multiply them, you get this. Since that's an integer, the product is even. Yeah, so it's very, very well written. Um, it's not so terse. I think a lot of discrete math books, um, when they do have solutions, 
First of all, they don't appear here. They're just solutions to the examples. Second of all, they're a little bit rigorous and terse. This one actually has odd numbered solutions to all the exercises and they show you the proofs, which I think makes it really cool. But yeah, I think this is a fantastic book for beginners. Let's take a look at uh, the section on groups and semigroups. This is a fun section because not all discrete math books contain this. A lot of the other sections in this book, in this book are very standard. For example, the section on logic, the section on sets, the induction, the counting, um, the relations, all that stuff is super, super standard. But this, this is something that's a little bit more exotic. And I've read this entire chapter, chapter nine, and I thought it was an extremely good read. Having said that, my viewpoint might be a little bit biased because I already knew the material. So here's where they define binary operations. They define it as a function, which I think is cool. And then here you see examples. They give you lots of examples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then here uh, is an example of a table, right? You can define a binary operation with a table, which is also nice. So it's just filled with examples. And then here's the exercises. And again, you have those odd numbered solutions to all of the exercises, which I think make this um, a really good read. So yeah, I think this is a great book, um, great for beginners. Again, I've read various sections, um, the induction stuff, the counting stuff, um, the stuff on semi-groups and groups. I haven't read the whole book. And it's really interesting because I have two copies of this book. So this one, this one is the third edition. I also have the fourth edition. I believe it has a white cover. I'd have to back up over here and look for it. Yeah, I don't see it, but I know I have it. So I have two copies of this book, which is kind of strange. So let me just say this, if you're thinking about buying this book, I say get it and I'll try to leave a link in the description, but you can also get uh, an older copy. So, and I don't think there's much of a difference uh, between uh, the fourth edition of this book and the third edition of this book. I'm pretty sure they're very similar. If you're wondering why I have two copies, it was an accident. I'm pretty sure I paid like less than $10 for this book. And I, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I accidentally bought two. It's kind of a weird thing to do, right? To accidentally buy uh, two books that are the same. This is 1.4, which is on the division of integers. Let's look at some of the exercises here. So an exercise is one through four for the given integers, M and N, write M as QM plus R with R between zero and N. So basically they're saying, apply the division algorithm uh, with M and N, right? So that's kind of cool. It gets you used to the algorithm and the way it works. So that's computational. And then here they're asking you for the greatest common divisor. So more computational. Here you do a couple more computational ones. Here you do some stuff with mod functions. And then here you have a little proof. Now this is an even one, so you're not gonna get a solution to this one, so it's not a perfect book. But here you get 17, so you'll have a full proof for that, or at least a proof sketch. 19, same thing, 21, same thing. Let's check, right, this is 1.4, so let's see if we get solutions to 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25. So 1.4, let's just double check, right? So far, all the ones I've looked at, they all have solutions, which I think make this pretty, pretty awesome. So let me just find it. So it looks like we've got 17, 21, 23, and 25. And I think that was it, right? 17, 21, 23, and 25. Let's go back and check. So this is 1.4. My copy is a little bit old. The binding is starting to come out a little bit, which is a little bit unfortunate. That's one of the bad things about buying used books. Sometimes you get unlucky and yeah, they're all there. <laughs> so those are the ones we get. So it does have solutions to all the odd ones in this section. So one of the bad things about buying a used book, let me just show you, is this, this tends to happen, right? Um, when, you buy, when you buy used books. This also happened to uh, one of my uh, other books. Let me just show you actually. Why not? I'm making an unedited book review for the first time ever. No fancy effects. So here's another book that I bought used. This is Dumb It in the Foot by Abstract Algebra. And look what happened there, right? So and I paid quite a bit for it. So whether or not you get it used is up to you. In any case, I think this will help you learn discrete math. I recommend it and you can probably get it pretty inexpensively. Good luck.